reading through the Bible in a year. June 28th, Deuteronomy chapters 33 through 34, Psalm 119 verses 145 through 176, Isaiah 60, and Matthew chapter 8. This is the blessing with which Moses, the man of God, blessed the people of Israel before his death. He said, Yahweh came from Sinai and dawned from Seir upon us. He shone forth from Mount Paran. He came from the ten thousands of the holy ones, with flaming fire in his right hand. Yes, he loved his people. All his holy ones were in his hand. So they were, rather, so they followed in your steps, receiving direction from you, when Moses commanded us a law as a possession for the assembly of Jacob. Thus, Yahweh became king in Jeshurun, with the, or rather, when the heads of the people were gathered, all the tribes of Israel together. Let Reuben live and not die, but let his men be few. Then, Rather, And he said this of Judah, Hear, O Yahweh, the voice of Judah, bring him in to his people. With your hands contend for him, and be a help against his adversaries. And of Levi, he said, Give to Levi your Thummim and your Urim to your godly one, who, te- rather, who you tested at Massa, with whom you quarreled at the waters of Meribah who said of his father and mother, I regard them not. He disowned his brothers and ignored his children, for they they observed your word and kept your covenant. They shall teach Jacob your rules and Israel your law. They shall put incense before you and whole burnt offerings on your altar. Bless, O Yahweh, his substance, and accept the work of his hands. Crush the loins of his adversaries, of those who hate him, that they rise not again. Of Benjamin he said, The beloved of Yahweh dwells in safety. The high God surrounds him all day long, and dwells between his shoulders. And of Joseph he said, Blessed by Yahweh be his land, with the choicest gifts of heaven above, and of the deep that crouches beneath, with the choicest fruits of the sun, in the rich yield of the month uh, of the months, with the finest produce of the ancient mountains, and the abundance of the everlasting hills, with the best gifts of the earth and its fullness, and the favor of him who dwells in the bush. May these rest on the head of Joseph, on the uh, pate. I'm assuming it's not pate of him who is prince among his brothers. A firstborn bull, he has majesty, and his horns are the horns of a wild ox. With them he shall gore the peoples, all of them, to the ends of the earth. They are ten thousands of Ephraim. They are the thousands of Manasseh. And of Zebulun, he said, Rejoice, Zebulun, in your going out, and Issachar in your tents. They shall call peoples to their mountain. There they offer right sacrifices. For they draw from the abundance of the seas and their tr- and the hidden treasures of the sand. And of Gad, he said, Blessed be he who enlarges Gad. Gad crouches like a lion. He tears off arm and scalp. He chose the best of the land for himself. For there a commoner's portion was reserved. And he came with the heads of the people. With Israel, he executed the justice of Yahweh for his judgments for Israel. And of Dan, he said, Dan is a lion's cub that leaps from Bashan. And of Naphtali, he said, O Naphtali, sated with favor and full of, ble- full of the blessing of Yahweh, possess and take the south. And of Asher, he said, Most blessed of sons be Asher. Let him be the favorite of his brothers. Let him dip his foot in oil. Your bars shall be iron and bronze. And as your days... So shall your strength be. There is none like God, O Jeshurun, who rides through the heavens to your help, through the skies in his majesty. The eternal God is your dwelling place, and the under excuse me, and underneath are the everlasting arms. 
he thrust out the enemy before you and said, destroy. So Israel lived in safety. Jacob lived alone in a land of grain and wine, whose heavens dropped down dew. Happy are you, O Israel, who is like you, a people saved by Yahweh, the shield of your help and the sword of your triumph. Your enemies shall come fawning to you and shall tread upon and you shall tread upon their backs. Then Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo, to the top of Pisgah, which is opposite Jericho. And Yahweh showed him all the land, Gilead as far as Dan, all Naphtali, the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah as far as the western sea, the Negeb and the plain, that is, the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees as far as Zoar. And Yahweh said to him, This is the land which I swore to uh, Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. I will give it to your offspring. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you shall not go over there. So Moses, the servant of Yahweh, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of Yahweh. And he buried him in the valley in the land of Moab opposite Beth Peor. But no one knows the place of his burial to this day. Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eye was undimmed and his vigor unabated. The people of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab thirty days. Then the days of weeping and and mourning for Moses were ended. And Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands on him. So the people of Israel obeyed him and did as Yahweh had commanded Moses. And there was not arisen, and there has not arisen, a prophet since in Israel like Moses, whom Yahweh knew face to face. For none like him, for all the signs and the wonders that, um, yet none like him, for all the signs and the wonders that Yahweh sent him to do in the land of Egypt, to Pharaoh, to all his servants, and to all his land. And for all the mighty power and the great deeds of terror that Moses did in the sight of all Israel. If this is your first time reading through the Bible, I would like to congratulate you on now completing what is called the Pentateuch. This is the first five books of the Old Testament. Most people get to about maybe Leviticus before they start waning off. Very few people make it to numbers. Congratulations. This is big news. Um, We're going to keep going because that's what we do here. It's fantastic. And I love the book of Joshua. All right. Let's go ahead and move on now to Psalm 119 and finish out the longest of the Psalms. With my whole heart I cry, answer me, O Yahweh, I will keep your statutes. I call to you, save me, that I may observe your testimonies. I rise before dawn and cry for help, I hope in your words. My eyes are awake before the watches of the night, that I may meditate on your promise. Hear my voice according to your steadfast love, O Lord. O Yahweh, according to your justice, give me life. They draw near who persecute me with evil purpose. They are far from your law. But you are near, O Yahweh, and all your commandments are true. Long have I known from your testimonies that you have founded them forever. Resh Look on my affliction and deliver me. For I do not forget your law. Plead my cause and redeem me. Give me life according to your promise. Salvation is far from the wicked, for they do not seek your statutes. Great is your mercy, O Yahweh. Give me life according to your rules. Many are my my persecutors and my adversaries, but I do not swerve from your testimonies. I look at the faithless with disgust because they do not keep your commands. Consider how I love your precepts. Give me life according to your steadfast love. The sum of your word is truth, and every one of your righteous rules endures forever. Sin and Shin Princes persecute me without cause, but my heart stands in awe of your words. I rejoice at your word like one who finds great spoil. 
I hate and abhor falsehood, but I love your law. Seven times a day I praise you for your righteous rules. Great peace have those who love your law. Nothing can make them stumble. I hope for your salvation, O Yahweh, and I do your commandments. My soul keeps your testimonies. I love them exceedingly. I keep your precepts and testimonies, for all my ways are before you. Ta. Let my cry come before you, O Yahweh. Give me understanding according to your word. Let my plea come before you. Deliver me according to your word. My lips will pour forth praise, for you teach me your statutes. My tongue will sing of your word, for all your commandments are right. Let your hand be ready to help me, for I have chosen your precepts. I long for your salvation, O Yahweh, and your law is my delight. Let my soul live and praise you, and let your rules help me. I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek your servant, for I do not forget your commands or your commandments. Now Isaiah 60. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of Yahweh has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But Yahweh will arise upon you, and his glory will be seen upon you. And nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from afar, and your daughter shall be carried on the hip. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and exult, because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and of Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense, and they shall bring good news, the praises of Yahweh. All the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered to you. The rams of Nebaioth shall minister to you. They shall come up with acceptance on my altar, and I will beautify my beautiful house. Who are these that fly like a cloud, and like doves to their windows? For the coastland shall hope for me, the ships of Tarshish first, to bring your children from afar, their silver and gold with them, for the name of Yahweh your God, and for the Holy One of Israel, because he has made you beautiful. Foreigners shall build up your walls, and their kings shall minister to you. For in my wrath I struck you, but in my favor I had mercy upon you. Your gates shall be open continually. Day and night they shall not be shut, that people may bring to you the wealth of the nations, with their kings led in, pre in procession. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve you shall perish. Those nations shall be utterly laid waste. The glory of Lebanon shall come to you, the cypress, the plain, and the pine, to beautify the places of my sanctuary. And I will make the places of my feet glorious. The sons of those who afflicted you shall come bending low to you, and all who despised you shall bow down at your feet. They shall call you the city of Yahweh, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel, whereas you have been forsaken and hated with no one passing through. I will make you majestic forever, from a joy from age to age. And you shall suck the, mi the milk of nations, and you shall nurse at the breast of kings, and you shall know that I, Yahweh, am your Savior and your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Instead of bronze, I will bring gold. Instead of iron, I will bring silver. Instead of wood, bronze, instead of stones, iron. I will make your overseers peace and your taskmasters, uh, taskmasters righteousness. Violence shall no more be heard in your land, devastation or destruction within your borders. You shall call your walls salvation and your gates praise. The sun shall be no more, uh, your light by day, 
nor for brightness shall the moon give you light. But Yahweh will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Your sun shall no more go down, nor your moon withdraw itself. For Yahweh will be your everlasting light, and your days of mourning shall be ended. Your people shall all be righteous. They shall possess the land forever, the branch of my planting and the work of my hands, that I might be glorified. The least of one shall become a clan, the smallest one a mighty nation. I am Yahweh. In its time, I will hasten it. Including today in Matthew chapter 8. When Jesus came down from the mountain, great crowds followed him. And behold, a leper came to him and knelt before him, saying, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. And Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I will be clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus said to him, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a proof to them. When he had entered Capernaum, a centurion came forward to him, appealing him, or appealing to him, Lord, my servant is lying paralyzed at home, suffering terribly. And he said to him, I will come and heal him. But the centurion replied, Lord, I am not worried that I have you come under my roof, but only say the word and my servant will be healed. For I too am a man under authority, with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes. And to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. Jesus heard this. He marveled. And he said to those who followed him, Truly I tell you, with no one in Israel have I found such faith. I tell you, many will come from the east and the west and recline at table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, while the sons of the kingdom, meaning those of the house of Israel, will be thrown out into the outer darkness. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The centurion said, rather, and to the centurion, Jesus said, Go, let it be done for you, as you have believed. And the servant was healed at that very moment. When Jesus entered Peter's house, he saw his mother-in-law lying sick with a fever. And he touched her hand, and the fever left her, and she rose and began to serve him. That evening they brought to him many who were oppressed by demons, and he cast out the spirits of the word and healed all who were, uh, who were sick. This was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. He took our illnesses and bore our diseases. Now, when Jesus saw a crowd around him, he gave orders to go to the other side. And a scribe came up to him and said, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Another of the disciples said to him, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, Follow me, and leave the dead to bury their own dead. When he got into the boat, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great storm on the sea, so that the boat was being swamped by the waves. But he was asleep. And they went and woke him, saying, Save us, Lord, we are perishing. And he said to them, what? Why are you afraid, O you of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. The men marveled, saying, What sort of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? When he came to the other side, to the country of the Gadarenes, two demon-possessed men met him coming out of the tombs, so fierce that no one could pass that way. As a note here, uh, if you've read through the text with me before, um, you'll see that Matthew refers to it as two demon-possessed men, while um, Luke uh, and Mark mention that there's only one. Um, there's a couple different thoughts on this. Um, I'll go ahead and read the note here from the Reformation Study Bible to help out with that. So perhaps only one of these two demoniacs is exceedingly violent, so Mark and Luke mention only that one. 
Matthew may mention both to success, uh, sorry, to suggest that two witnesses attest this victory of Jesus over demons. Let's continue on. Verse 29, and behold, they cried out, what have you to do with us, O son of God? Have you come here to torment us before the time? Now, a herd of many pigs was feeding at some distance from them. And the demons begged him, saying, If you cast us out, send us away into the herd of pigs. So he said to them, Go. So they came out and went into the pigs, and behold, the whole herd rushed down the steep bank into the sea and drowned in the waters. The herdsmen fled, and going into the city, they told everything, especially what had happened to the demon-possessed men. And behold, all the city came out. Think about that. Everybody knew about these demoniacs. And yet, the entire city, who had been plagued by this for a while, came out to congratulate Jesus? To praise him and thank him for what he's done? No. They came out to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they begged him to leave their region. They were terrified. Makes sense to me. All right. That is all the reading and all of the notes for today. God willing, we'll be back tomorrow. Behold the word of the Lord.